What's up, everybody? Uh, we're going to be tying up some of these uh, sandbar flies, little mini crabs. Uh, a lot of fun to tie up if you never tied any. We're going to go through it right now. So, um, first off, you got to have uh, an A-Rex hook. This is a uh, NS. 115 deep streamer now the reason i like the deep streamers is it's got a little bit of a longer shank what's up spawn fly and so um it's also made for the salt which is where we're going to be finding these uh little mini sandbar flies so we're going to be doing a couple tricks here at the vice these are relatively quick pattern i can't remember where i saw this um i haven't tied any up in a long time but let's go ahead and get started so if anybody knows who tied this up or something very similar um, go ahead and let me know but we've got the nano silk in the vise this is a six odd i like to keep it a little bit uh thicker for this very purpose um, and you'll see why here in a bit but we're using some uh, lead eyes um, these are weighted i think these are the small and so a little trick to tying these on are i don't try to time in um, angle I'm just tying it in so that the dumbbell is even with the eye. And what I'll do is I'm, I'm holding on to the, the dumbbell so I have the, the center exposed. So I just line it up. I do one, two, three loose wraps. And as I twist down, it's going to basically twist onto the top of the shank. Now it's at a slight angle, as you can see. And I'm keeping thread tension at this point. So since it's this way, I'm going to wrap over crisscross to it, which will straighten it out. So let's go ahead and get my, my hook oriented properly. And I kind of still keep my fingers there just in case. Um, and then as those eyes straighten out, I kind of keep track. I do two each way. And you really, really want to make sure you get enough wraps on there. And then I'll do some over-unders, as I call them. And I'll advance to the eye, go back down. I really want to make sure that these eyes are secure. And then I'll go ahead and advance my thread back to the bend of the hook. So we're tying up some sandbar flies. We're going to be doing a little bit of fun, too, with it. I, I think it's uh, really fun. Got a, been waiting on an order of some supplies. And this is just Gorilla Glue. Just going to put a small drop right there on the top and a drop on the bottom just to keep that lead eyes in place. A little trick of the trade. Now, this recipe, I really wish I knew who did it. Um, it's just a sandbar fly, um, but it uses up this some of the Senyo's um, uh, shaggy dub. He's known for his laser dub, but this is kind of a spandexy. I don't even know. It's not really spandex. It's weird. It's kind of a, yeah, that was thread. That's why this is better. So yeah, it's a little bit of a, almost like a thin, thin rubber band. I don't know. It's kind of crazy stuff. Definitely shaggy. And all I'm going to do is we don't really need to line these up properly, but you want to make sure you got most of it right there. And I'm just going to pinch wrap that right there at the bend with two two wraps, trying not to capture very much of it. And you'll see they're not very even. That doesn't matter. We're going to cut it. And then we'll just fold these back over itself, do a couple wraps in front kind of to get them positioned up, and then I'll wrap right over the top. I don't know who requested some salt water flies, but here you go. This is definitely some salt water. And then I'll just over under it and then secure that down nice and tight. Okay, now here's why it didn't matter. We're just going to pull these back and snip it. But I'd say you want roughly the hook gap. So you can see right there, it's kind of fanned around each side. Nice and neat like. If you got an excess fiber, just go ahead and Strip it. Now, we're going to be doing some crazy uh, color combos here, but I uh, this is just some, some ice dub. I always want to go with some white. I start with white. 
What's up, Argentina, Patagonia? Now, for this one, I'm going to get into this uh, red. It's like a red. Now, I don't want too much of this. I want it to be primarily white. So I just got a little pinch of that, and you can see if uh, I can hold it properly. We just got a little bit of red, mostly white. And we'll go ahead and mix it in, just aligning these ice fibers together. And I don't remember, I put this in, it's ice tub, but I can't remember who makes this ice tub. It's, I put it in a, my own organizer I made just by drilling holes in a, a compartment. What's up, Japan? Konnichiwa. Excited for the Olympics to be over there partly because I should be traveling there right shortly thereafter. So everything will be nice and neat. All right, so we got a bulk of that. I'm gonna basically fold it in half in the very middle and fold it around my thread, bring it, oops, let's realign that. I got away, it got away from me. I'm too busy listening to the, the movie night party going on in the other room. I'm watching uh, the Pokemon movie. What's up, Vegas and then Nevada? Seems like we got a good crowd on here. And just FYI, this will be saved on YouTube in case anybody really wants to go back and watch it. We're streaming on YouTube as well. I'm going to try doing that for a while and see how I like it. But I pinch strap it over the top, and then I'll just spread this ice stub in half down each side of that shank, and then I'll kind of pinch it. And without letting it wrap into that shaggy dub i'm just going to do some nice wraps right over that ice dub and also over that uh, shaggy dub kind of securing it in place and we will pull this kind of around our vise here i'm going to adjust it out so you can maybe see that a little bit better you can see the ice dub at this point is a lot longer than the uh, the shaggy dub so all I do is I pull a little tension and I'm just going to snip a little bit. And as I keep pulling, I'm going to snip a little bit more. And that way it kind of gives it a slight taper. We're just looking for something flashy, something visible for um, the species to target and want to look at and want to chomp down on. And so there we go. There is a nice big chunk of flash. And I can't find my pick, but I don't know. There we go. It's nice. Okay. Um, we're going to need some rubber legs for this too. Uh, what vice am I on? This is the uh, more vice. And I'm not spinning it because uh, I'm doing a little bit of a precise work tonight. We're just... Uh, not going too crazy. Plus, I'll be honest, I haven't tied one of these, and I don't remember when the last time I tied one was. But I got a, a homie that uh, wanted some flies to go fishing. Oh, sorry. Back up. This is just a, a centipede leg. You can use uh, flexi floss. You can use – there's a whole bunch of different options. But I'm basically, I tied it in in half on the shank of the hook, and this is just half of a strand. And then I'll orient those in the flying V down each side. And then as I as I wrap backwards, I'm kind of putting a little bit of tension, but not insane. And then that way, both these legs go down the side of the, the shank like so. And you can see that's just about right. I just need to go a little bit more. I mean, that's... Somebody asked what vice I'm using. That's right there is why I love this vice. Pop it in, twist it, pop it in. There's no adjusting. What's up, vet? Now, this is not what most guys use in the salt, but the reason I like using this grizzly leg is I just take a red Sharpie, I stretch it out, and I put red marks. So it's already got the black, and we're just adding the red, and that seems to be what – most of the guys, I actually, I've never salt fished um, at all. Um, so don't ask me if these work, but I know guys that have uh, sent me back pictures and they work. And so I just kind of bar that 
red and black with a little bit of red. And this is just a Sharpie, nothing fancy. Seems to hold color, at least until you lose it. So pretty simple right there. Um, I'm going to leave those long at this point. Now we've got some uh, ultra chenille. How much material do you have? How much material do you end up throwing out or scrapping? Come up with a new flyer, new ideas. Um, I I actually don't uh, come up with any new ideas for fishing. So um, just what you pay the big boys for. Uh, I did some saltwater fly fishing today. Ca caught a speckled sea trout. Sweet dude. Okay. Now I've got roughly I don't know eight inches. I'll, I'm tying up a bunch of these and. This is literally a pattern that you can tie up a bunch in like five minutes when you're not being OCD like I am now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this chenille in right there back up against the dumbbell eyes. Tie it all the way down, keeping it on the top of the shank at this point. And then I'm not going to tie it in now, but I'm going to fold it over and cut it roughly longer than the eye. That way I know... Um, how long I need so I can still pull it over and still, uh, you know, get it, uh, what's the word? Still have my fingers in room to work with. Now we're going to be tying, we're going to be making some of these legs and this is just ultra chenille in, uh, I think it's worm brown. Anything tan will work, but I'm cutting these roughly inch and a quarter roughly give or take a few millimeters. Well, uh, good luck, man, on the uh, the Wilmington, man. Sounds like you're fishing more than the rest of us. That's a fly fishing bet, heading on a fishing trip. Now, this ultra chenille right now is gonna get beat to death because we're tying this with dumbbell eyes on top, and so it's going to ride hook point up. And, um, is there any fish there? Um, there's there's some fish in Salt Lake. Uh, you got to kind of get away from the airport. It says uh, fly fishing uh, with outdoors with Jen. The further you get away from the airport, the better off you'll be. So I just burn those ends real quick, just like that. Pretty simple. And then I'll switch hands and do the same thing. And just lightly do it. If you take a little bit too much off, you can always redo it. And some guys will even dip this in a little bit of resin. I don't, I lose my flies before then. So, all right. Man, it sounds like everybody's fishing. I need to go fishing. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm basically placing this on the dumbbell side of the shank. And because we um, put that chenille down first, it's kind of allowing me to manipulate the bend here. But you can see right there, just figure eight that so that the legs are coming off a little bit back. I'll do one wrap in front of the chenille. And if you feel like they're not slightly going back, do one or two more wraps. But you want to kind of limit your wraps at this point so that we're not creating a thread base here. Um, Outdoors with Jen, three and a half hour drive from Salt Lake, kind of on your bucket list. Uh, yeah, there's some great fishing. Three and a half hours, which way though? Because you may not want to drive this far, depending on where you're coming from. Just saying. Um, I really enjoy fishing in Utah, but there's no fish here. You shouldn't come here. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, it's a lot of fun fishing here. It's a lot of fun. A lot of good fish, a lot of good people. Um, but like I said, the further you get away from Salt Lake, I mean, there's a few places you could fish like right out of Salt Lake, but not, I mean, you're still 15, 20 minute drives from anywhere. Most people drive up into a few different counties around. If you're really interested in coming up, uh, I could put you in touch with some people or give you suggestions on where to go. And I got a little ahead of myself there watching comments rather than, uh, paying attention to what I'm doing. So we got all our legs tied in. 
and I'm going to work back to right in front of that first leg. Now here's where the fun part gets in. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Got to find the right colors here. Okay. I'm thinking that is it. Okay. I'm doing a crab of some sorts. Yes, correct. So I'm just going to pull off a good chunk of, uh, this is some McFly foam here. Pull it off. And I actually got two little strips there. So I'll separate that out. I just need one strip for this. And we're going to be wasting quite a bit of material. And I'll cut that out. And then we've got the red here. I haven't even opened it yet. So what I do is I write with a Sharpie on here with a red Sharpie on the red. And this is just some uh, McFly foam egg. And I'm going to try and not pull off a full strand. I want to get about half, half of a little clump, if you call them that. I don't know how this stuff. Some guys are great at separating this. I'm the worst. I always seem to pick the wrong one. There we go. Doesn't matter. It all gets blended together. Cut it the same length. Set it aside. Okay. Sounds like everyone's planning fishing trips and not inviting me on the uh, the Instagram feed. Anyway, okay. Now we come to the fun part. And this is kind of the deer hair trick I've kind of adopted. Is I'm going to take these two colors and slice about a inch and a half same same length as your uh, your legs and you'll be left over with these two small clumps save those don't discard them yet now what i have here is i've got if you've ever tied a, an egg you can see that you know basically you tie this in you're getting a multicolor egg we're, we're we're basically creating three or four eggs right here on this and so what i'm going to do is I'm going to create a egg taco. So I folded it in half, kind of like you would a hot dog almost, so that the, um, what color is this? This is the yellow, light yellow. So it's kind of all encompassing that orange. And since I'm right there, I'm gonna basically stab it into the hook point, come up and over with one wrap, Make sure that my yellow didn't get sucked over to the other side. And then I'll crank down with a second wrap. Pull that all back as I pull down. And then build up a small thread dam right there in front of that to kind of poof it up. And then I will advance my thread up and in front of that next leg group. And we're going to do the same thing in between those front two legs. So take that, make your taco into a hot dog. Push those two yellows up right up against each other. Come up and over and down. Check it. Looks good to me. And since these aren't sticking around with me, since I don't salt fly fish, oops, I trapped the leg. Let's back that out. Very carefully. Somehow I trapped a leg. Rookie mistake. Okay, we're good again. So we'll just go right back up and over. Why do I have three legs? Where is it coming from? Ah, there it is. Trapped it right there. Somehow. Didn't like that. Happens. That's why we double check. Okay, our taco is still good. Houston, we have a problem. Well, we had a problem. Problem is resolved now. Make sure not to trap that leg as we go around. This time, kind of pull up as you check it. Looks good. And secure wraps in front. Okay, guess what? We're going to do this one more time. Cross over right behind the eyes this time. Let me check all these comments. If anybody's talking to me, 
Uh, looks like I got invited with Helix Guides to a fishing trip. Got invited with Fishing Vet. Um, sweet. Thanks, everybody. I'm excited to go fish with you guys. Bert, 19761. We are tying a uh, sand crab, um, basically a sandbar crab. And if anybody has seen this done, I saw it done forever ago. And I know this is very, very close to somebody else's pattern and so i really liked it and i tied up a bunch so i'm just kind of eyeballing well not eyeballing but freestyling this from memory and i'd be very curious to get the exact recipe i know this is so close so somebody out there has this on their website or something so now <clears throat> we have that little spot that we uh, we saved but here's the critical part. Take your orange, get rid of most of it. I don't want a lot of it. I just want a little hint of orange on this last group because most of this is going to get cut off. And so I'll basically push that up and in. What happened there? Our fly, our hook adjusted. Don't want that. I think it's from when I tweaked it earlier. There we go. We're golden. Okay. Get this in. Taco it. One wrap, two wrap, crank down, and then we just tie a big, nice little thread dam right in front of that. Um, no, these are not for me. These are for uh, a homie that uh, said he wanted some sand crabs, and I thought it'd be fun. So I'm just tying them up a few different colors because I don't know what he will need. Because I'm that type of guy. Got some orange thread here to match that uh, red orange. And I'm just giving a generous coat of this Sharpie to that thread. And if you haven't used the uh, Norvice right um, automatic bobbin, I guess, is the appropriate name. Here's the coolest part about it. I color my thread. I don't have to wind it up. I just bring it up and it. Tensions it. Nope. All right. So I'm just giving a nice uh, orange head here that we will uh, secure up here in a minute. You here in Utah right now, man? You back? Okay. So that was just for color. And we'll set that aside. All right, now, this doesn't look like much, but it is awesome at this point. But before we start trimming this, I'm just going to orient these legs, take some of my uh, NOTAC uh, Semperfly UV, and I've got a little bit of thread right there. I'm just going to take my Sharpie and color the belly of this. Just for kicks and giggles. My money. Okay, now make sure your legs are oriented where you want them. I'll put a little bit of uh, right there around the eyes. We already super glued our eyes, so this doesn't really matter. But basically just trying to help get those legs a little bit of durability for running across sand and all sorts of funness before you cure make sure they're where you want them because they will somewhat move but also somewhat stay where you put them at this point so yeah nano silk somebody just said they ordered a bulk spool of nano silk that stuff is the bomb diggity Okay, now I'm going to cut my legs. I'm going to just trim off just a tad bit, or sorry, my um, centipede legs right there. Oh. Okay, now here's the fun part. We're going to get messy. I'm going to start here. I'm going to pull these fibers back and just use that hook point as a reference and snip. 
and we did a perfect job on that. And then I'm going to take the sides now. Let's do the whole top. And I know the hook point's about here. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to pull up and snip. Pull up and snip. And pull up and snip. Okay, we're getting closer to the hook point. Just be mindful of it. Once you see it, stop cutting where you think you may damage those uh, scissors on it. So, But we do want to get rid of all this uh, back foam or McFly foam. It's not actual foam. Whatever this stuff is, the egg foam. And that's a cool little head right there. Got some definite... Uh, Properties of awesomeness. And we'll just kind of pull these up, trying not to, trying to get that foam off these legs. It's going to want to do that. And then I usually trim mine even with the eyes. Just pick out using your scissor tips if you need to. So we went even with the eyes to trim the sides. And then I'll just kind of gradually shape this, working my way up. Trying to be mindful of where we want that hook gap. We don't really want it to be, I want to add a little bit of structure or curvature profile to this. And then make sure to clean up that so whoever's using this can get into that hook eye. And now I'll do the same thing over here. Find that edge of the barbell eye and kind of go straight back. And then as I come up, I'm just trimming that almost so the hump is about here. This is just kind of arts and crafts time. Just gradually working my way into this across the top. And we're just about there. So it's a relatively quick uh, pattern, especially if you're not, you know, walking through it. But, uh, Cool little uh, profile there, if you can see that. Let's zoom in. Got some uh, unique uh, camouflage. Um, let's go uh, look back here just a second. We finished trimming this. I'll go through and look at comments. I've been focusing tonight on this. Are you talking about uh, the spoons, Josh? Somebody asked if I've used the fake fingernail thingies for this. And I'll be honest, this is the, uh, there's one other variation of this I've tied before, but I, I, I haven't tied a lot of these, these type of salt sandbar flies or sandbar crabs. Man, this turned out really cool. So if anybody out there uh, has more expertise than I do in what I did good or what I did bad, you let me know. Mm. All right, that's pretty cool. We're done. Mm. So you can see we got the flash, we got the uh, the shaggy dub, we've got our legs. Then we've got the uh, the awesome top that kind of aligned. Usually I do a little bit better job aligning those than this. You can see, yeah, I guess they're all about the same. You know, we got your wicked camo here. And uh, here's a uh, hint of blue. So... One fly, um, pretty heavy, lands flat. Um, so 
let's go through. Let's see uh, if we got any uh, questions about this. Um, maybe you should ask again if I missed it. So J-Bar, Sandbar Flies, yeah, these are actually heading down to California. Um, at Sandbar Flies, I'll have to check them out. No, he uses them, the, them as the back shell. Yeah, that's what I figured they were used for. Somebody used fake fingernails, super fabulous. The other way I've done these is I take like a, a, a mallard feather, and instead of tying in all this, I'll just do a little bit of a, um, what's the word? Almost like a dub loop flashy body. And I'll make the body and then I'll just I'll put a little bit of resin on some mallard or on uh, a hen feather and then just drape that over the top as the shell. That's kind of a more organic way. And yeah, Mickey, these might work for Florida, I'm sure. These are for California specifically. And Justin Barnes is going to change his name. So cool. There's one question. Um, the question is, how much material do you end up throwing out or scrapping when experimenting? Um, like I said, I don't, I don't. Uh, there's, there's generally not a lot of waste. Uh, you can see here that's that's relatively minimal waste. Some flies take a lot more waste than others, um, but of course, there is waste. Um, you know, we used a little bit of, sorry, of this pack and a little bit of this pack. And I can't remember how much this cost. It was maybe a four, five, maybe six bucks a pack. So factor in how much I used tonight, maybe uh, 15 cents maybe. And here we've got one and a half cents maybe. I did waste a little bit of chenille, and uh, we got plenty to go around. That was probably three bucks. I hardly ever waste hooks. That's probably the most expensive part of your fly, especially if you're, you know, I like to use really good hooks. These these uh, A Rex haven't failed me yet, especially since I'm new to the salt and I have confidence in it. So that's what I tie up most of my salt stuff on for people and I haven't had any complaints. So your hook's the most expensive part. And if you ever screw up a fly, which I've done, it depends on what kind of rush I'm in, but sometimes I'll take all the, uh, just take a razor blade and cut it off. But uh, that's, you know, that's how you save your hook. Just don't super glue the whole thing. Um, what are the made, legs made from? They're made from a chenille, ultra chenille. This is just brown. That's clever. Okay, Brendan. So I think you tied up something similar to this. I'll have to go back and check your feed. Maybe that's maybe this is yours. Um, but I, I just love how the weight of this, and especially because he's new to fly fishing, and so that little lead eye will give enough weight, but enough to drop down so he can go fish the surf. And I really like doing the dual tone, adding the eggs. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Reef, real fingernail clippings glued together will work well. From Katie. Um, Katie, I'm going to have to see a live feed on this. And um, I almost waste nothing when I switch from Philadelphia to traditional marabou. Um, outdoors with Jen. I'll have to, you'll have to explain that a little bit more. You waste almost nothing when you switch from fair flies fur from traditional marabou. Oh, meaning when you switch to fair flies fur, you don't waste because you're not wasting marabou. Um, yeah, I I'd have to look into that because I know those the the, the, the fair flies fur is a little bit ex, ex, expensive maybe, um, whereas a pack of marabou is relatively cheap. I know they have on Fairflies right now, they have a sale going on. I don't know if you're talking about the brushes. What's up, dude? Um, I've used their brushes before, and it's true. You only need one wrap. And I like that a lot of their stuff goes to benefit uh, 
But yeah, I've never used their fly fur. That's come out since. I used a lot of their 5D brushes when they first were starting up. But uh, that's supposed to replace your, that looks more like a craft fur to me though. I don't know if I'd use it in the same place that I'd use Marabou. I'll, I'll have to talk to Vet about that. I know he's used a ton of it. So if Vet's, if Fly Fishing Vet's still on here and wants to chime in, um, because the fly fur looks to me like it's a substitute for craft fur. So I, I don't know why you're using, I guess there are certain flies you tie with marabou in place of that, but or, uh, or craft fur, but using my craft fur, I'm not using marabou. Um, oh, Spawn, you got some. Well, um, I'll have to put some on an order. So... I like that they uh, a lot of what they sell goes to benefit uh, the, their their cause that they're working on, providing uh, sustainable jobs for for uh, I think for the women. So peace, you know, props to them. And they are having a sale uh, right now. I think I saw on Instagram. Uh, it's like twenty percent off. I've seen a couple guys reposting it. So go ahead and check them out. That's a pretty good uh, deal. And uh, I don't know if Spawn Flyfish is matching that. I'm sure maybe he will. I don't know. Or maybe it's the same as the sale price. So uh, this hook size is a size four, and I'm tying these up in fours, twos, and sixes. So basically little sandbar crabs. I mean, they're little guys. The lights are really hitting that hard. So about – a little bit, maybe the size is half a silver dollar. So, anyway, um, we always price match. Cool, didn't know that. Anyway, so um, and if you know they, if Spawn carried this uh, McFly foam, then you could order everything you need because I uh, think I got these hooks from Josh, and I think I got these dumbbell eyes from Spawn Fly Fish. And I had the ultra chenille already, and I had the ice dub already, but I'm sure he carries that. And I got the uh, shaggy dub, I think, from him. So check it out. Anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in. Like I said, if you missed this, want to rewatch it, like you don't have time in the next 24 hours because this only saves for 24 hours, um, you can head over to uh, my YouTube channel because it is going to be saved there, and you can go uh, watch it. And uh, – it will be on there forever, forever. Anyway, I'm going to go uh, watch the movie with uh, my kids now. So I hope you guys have a good night.